rest areas. The fear of parking at them and taking your 10 hour break or to go and park at them and take your 10 hour break. Let's talk about it. Now, I chose to park at a rest area because I needed a uh, place to park. But here's where a lot of people start getting scared about rest areas. You wake up, your alarm clock just woke you up. It's 2.30, maybe 3.30 in the morning, like right now. It's time for you to get ready to go. You see the lone person walking across the uh, rest area parking spot. You know? And, um, and a lot of people fear. But regardless of what you do, you know, you still got to get out and do your pre-trip. Try get your truck ready for it to be safe for you while you're out on the road. So, what do you do? Me, grab your jacket, grab your hat, throw it on, grab your flashlight. Come walk with me on my pre trip. Now, before you get out late at night, in the middle of the night, to do your pre-trip, you always check your mirrors first. They tell you that before you even take off. Check your mirrors first. That's one of the most important things to make sure that they're safe so you can be able to see to the left and the right of you. But it also allows you to see straight down your trailer. See if there's anybody out there. But of course, they could be in your blind spot. So you can just reach out, look down before you open your door. Get out of here. I don't have the best camera in the world. It's nighttime. You got trucks pulling off. As you can see, the area is well lit. There are literally other trucks all up and down this rest area. So therefore, there is help somewhere close by that you can go get if you need it. They're down here too. As you can see, it's well lit. So come on, let's go ahead and do this pre-trip. You know, I forgot to turn my lights on and stuff, so I can go ahead and get that taken care of too. So I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, done with that. Couple flashlight on, leave it sitting right there while I unlatch. Grab your hood, right by the handle, pull. Now me, I like to start my pre-trip on the driver's side, cause I'm in a Kenwood. Kenwood T680. And see with the T680 as a safety latch 
on the um, on the hydraulics over there on the other side that you had to push up in order to close your hood. If you start on the other side, you'll forget to push that safety latch. You walk back around there and push that safety latch so you, you just try to close it, you might break something. Now, what I do with my pre-trip, check my engine for leaks. I don't see no leaks, anything, anywhere. Look at the uh, condition of my belt. It's not all ruined and, and rubbed out and everything. It's not warm. Look down on the ground for any signs of oil stains or any anything leaking. You know, your different fluids have different colors. You can see it on the ground. I don't see anything like that. You check your reservoirs. They're good. Check and make sure that your uh, filters are safe. Safe. You know? Check and make sure your fuel filter is not full. Because if it, 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 it might have a little in there, it might be halfway. But once you get full, it's time to change that fuel filter because it's no good anymore. Check the brakes. Check everything else. Make sure nothing is loose wire system nothing might even out here mess with your uh, your fuses walk around to the other side over here you do the exact same thing you want to check and make sure that this is not all frayed and burnt out everything because that that could be mean that there's an overcharge going on or the uh, actual unit is burnt out. You look for burn signs of burn marks and stuff like that in there. Your belt. There should be no more than a quarter inch of play in there. Anything more means that the thing that them belts can come loose. You want to check and make sure that they're not worn. You don't see burn marks on the uh, what you call it. You look at the uh, actual grooves of the um, belt. Make sure that there's no chunks missing. Meaning that thing can end up snapping while, you, while you're driving down the road. Look at your tires. Make make check, make sure you don't see no nails or anything like that in there. You want to check your hood caps. Any signs of looseness would be rust around there or even a lighter color showing that your uh, lug nuts are actually loose. You can pull this out and check to make sure that your uh, your bearings are still greased. You have had oil up in there, grease. That way, cause cause once it start that starts drying out, you gonna hear a grunt. You hear a slight whirring noise then eventually it's gonna start grinding and, and, and whatever it means your bearing is going bad do the same thing over here on the other side see I forgot to check the tire over here that's why I'm back over here but like I said do the exact same thing over here You know, a lot of people don't go this far. You don't have to go that far all the time. Even though you should, it's part of safety. Well, this is what I was saying. I'd like to start over here and go over there. But I just happen to forget something on the other side. You have the safety latch right here. Push that up so I can close my hood. My checkup under my hood is done. <clears throat> and you can take, you, know, you can literally see straight down there. You see the lights flashing, the lights on there, up top, up top, up here. 
Make sure your lights are shining down down below. Make sure that your, uh, what you call it, your license plate is still intact. Check your mirrors. They're not, they're still present. I'm not hanging off of any of that other good stuff. I'm gonna latch your hook. Get this one and you can latch the other one on the way when you're done uh, pre-tripping the other side. Please don't forget to latch your hook. <laughs> latch your hook. You can cause a problem later on down the line. Come down here and check the scratches. Anything out of the ordinary. Check your lug nuts. Same way. Check your tires. Cut a step back in between your, your uh, tractor and your trailer. Make sure your load locks are still in place. Me, I put a lock on my uh, load locks. Because people, when you're parked in certain areas, people will steal your load locks. I learned that a long time ago. I went to sleep with two load locks, woke up with none. <laughs> it's sad as that way, but that is why it is. You check, make sure all your connections are still still connected. You know what I'm saying? You don't have no exposed wires or whatever. Check for your uh, airbags. Make sure they are still inflated. And let's roll. Come on down, check. Check the size. Make sure nobody scratched your trunk up. Nine times out of ten, they didn't. But you know, you do have some knuckleheads that will will hit you and won't tell you nothing. Check as you walking walk here. You can look down and check and make sure nobody put no nails in down at the bottom of your tire. Check the tires. No nails there. Check your lug nuts. Check and make sure your airline is still connected. Cause see, see this, 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 these trailers here are self-inflated tires. That's the reason why you had that line there. As soon as you cut the truck on and everything, it, it checks the pr pressure and it and it uh and it corrects the pressure if there is any correction that needs to be done. It's done automatically. Check your lights there. Make sure your lights flashing in the back. You got all your lights done there. Make sure your seal is still in place. You don't want that to be disappeared because then they be talking about you tamper with your load. Now here is where it might get a little scary because it gets a little dark back here. But like I said, it's wide open. You can see anything that's coming coming your way. You know. You can see clear straight down your truck, your truck, and your trailer in between it. Even if there's another truck right here, I can still see straight down there. There's plenty of light, so I can see down there. You can see the silhouette or the uh, shadow of somebody that's there. You look up under your truck. Always check to make sure you look up under your truck. Make sure no, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's raining right now. It just got finished raining, really, but it's still like a little slight drizzle, and. Um, you want to make sure nobody climbed up under there to get away, get out of the elements. You know what I'm saying? Because if you pull off without checking under there and somebody was under there, there's a lot of clearance up under there, but it's the fact that they might have actually been up under the tire. And guess what? You just committed murder. Because <laughs> you ran their ass over. So, check your tires. Check your lug nuts. Check to make sure your pins are still in place. They say they got some people that like to go around playing with people's pins and stuff like that. And uh, you'll pull off down all of that. You know what I'm saying? You won't, you won't notice it until you go to stop. Your trailer's still moving, but your tires are stopping. They roll back there. It might pull it off track back there. You know what I'm saying? You have a serious problem that you got to pay to get that shit fixed. You know? And trust me, it's not cheap to put the uh, things, put the tandems back on track. You know, you check your lights, check the side of your trailer, check your landing gear still, uh, still in place. Not nobody let it down. 
Let's check your tires. You know what I'm saying? Check the make sure your handle is still stuck in there and not down. And your trailer is still connected. Check your airbags. Yeah, airbags back there too. You check them. Uh, make sure that they're, they're still inflated. Tires. They're not underinflated or anything like that. You can tell because they, they look a little flat when they're underinflated. Check your uh, connection for your airlines. Still intact. Including uh, electric, electrical your pigtail. Make sure all of that's still good. Check your gas caps. You can see them. Mine is in the back. Some people is on the sides. <clears throat> like that's my duh. Make sure that those are still in place and not just hanging off. Because if they're hanging off, then nine times out of ten, somebody was uh, siphoning your gas properly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Pre trip concluded. Check your lights. <clears throat> now let me go and get back in here in this truck. Got your handy dandy baby wipes so you can go ahead and clean all the crud off your fingers and everything from when you touch the oil. And everything. Oh, hey, didn't I tell you? I told you good, didn't I? I told you. I told you good. Usually you go lash up both sides. So that means I got to get back out. I get the other side of my hood. Because you'll notice it when you're driving down the road. It's flapping in the wind. And, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just moving up and down and everything. But that thing can come loose. Come, the air can blow it up. Block your vision. Cause you to panic. You run into people. All types of stuff. Don't nobody know what the hell going on, but you. <laughs> you know, basically, you fucked up. And you're going to pay for the consequences, too. So, you got that lot. Some will say I forgot to check my jet stick. But earlier during the daytime, I checked it. It was still good. Actually, it was great. See all that dirt came off on off my fingers and stuff? That was just to my fingers. You know, and uh it was in shape. Locked my doors. And now I'm safely secured back in my truck. You know, a lot of people have made that mistake of scaring people when there's no need to be scared. Not only are there other truckers, but there are people parked in these cars. They are inside of those cars as well. And um, they're asleep. Somebody is awoke over there. So it's not like you don't have help within screaming distance, yelling. For men, yell. Women scream. There's <laughs> a difference, you know. But there's no need to fear rest stops. When you go inside, as you can see, this one is well lit on the inside. Even over there where, the, where all the food and drinks and stuff is at, it's well lit. Why as you approach it you can see it, but you don't but I understand it's on the inside where you might run into the problems at. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, if you really feel un, un you know what I'm saying, um, what you call it, you can get your little self a little back 
is not this is a tire checker as you, it tells you right there on there tire checker you know tough stuff if you feel unsafe if you feel that unsafe get you one of these nice good heavy duty flashlights this is metal encased it's gonna hurt if you hit somebody you don't always have to ram back and try to you can jab somebody with it real quick jab them in the throat or something you know that shit hurt just as, just as bad Coke, jab them in the stomach you don't always have to reach back because that's the problem people always want to reach back and try to swing and that by that time they seen everything that you do but a quick jab to the stomach or the throat or even in the mouth somewhere in the face especially if you catch them in the nose that shit go hurt this is a heavy duty one it's big you can use it like a club if you have to but they got flashlights that are metal encased just like this one and they're bigger this is like just like the police the ones the police catch care and trust me, if the, if the police have to, in a case of emergency, they gonna club you with that son of a bitch too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's what was handy and, and it was available and they was able to use it and as a weapon to get you off of them. The police are supposed to be in charge at all times. When they start losing charge, that's when they, you know what I'm saying, losing control. That's when things start going down, going downhill. Never make the officer feel like they're not in control of the whole situation. Because that's what causes people to get into altercations with them, arguments with them, and everything else. Let the officer do his goddamn job. You listen to all these smart mouth motherfuckers want to question the police and all the other good stuff. That's what causes problems. You know? What, how, you, how you doing, officer? What do you need? Keep your hands in plain sight so they know that you're not trying to reach for nothing. You know? If your hand's down here, of course, I'm going to have my hand on my hip. Because I want to make sure you're not drawing down on me before I get, the, you know what I'm saying, getting the jump on me. My life, that officer is a living, breathing human being, too. They can die just like you can. And trust me, none of these officers left their home kiss their wives and children goodbye for the day to expect to get let somebody get the drop on them so they can't return home safely to their own family none of these officers intend on that sadly some officers don't make it home and it's you know what I'm saying and I hate to, I hate to see stuff, stuff like that happen I say, hate to see it on the news but some and then again you got some officers who are literally assholes you know what I'm saying? That's just them taking on that tone of authority. But at the same time, you know, it's not about being a punk. It's just respecting that officer. Make sure you go home, go home safely to your family, wife and kids, or husband and kids, or whatever it is that you got at home. You know, safely. Safety first. They always tell you that. But like I said, now I do understand because you have some rest areas where it is dark. There's no no facilities there. It's just a straight uh, 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 parking spot. You know, and it might be open spaces there, but you got to think about it. You gonna, are you going to violate the federal law just to find somewhere else to go and, and park, or are you going to park there? That choice is yours. You know, what I'm saying people, people, people try, sit there and try to play the women off as as if they are so weak and frail. Man, cut that bullshit out. You got some women out here that kick a man ass quick. <laughs> and believe me, they are out here. You know? 
You got some women. Oh. Please don't get me started. Talking about all that weak. That, that's bullshit. This is 2018. Women fought years for equality. Why in the hell are all of a sudden you call yourself the, 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 the weaker link? That's not you admitting that you are equal to men. That's not even standing on the same footing as equality. So therefore, if you can't stand on the same same stage as equality with us men, quit saying that you want equal, want to be equal with us. Quit fighting for it, because you, in your own sense, are admitting to that. Not me, you are. Like I said, this is a well lit area. You in your truck. You can get get things to where, you know, you can feel safe and, and do your pre-trip. It's not, you know what I'm saying? Take If you really feel that bad, take self-defense classes so you know how to defend yourself in certain situations. They have them out there. Some of them are even free for women to join and learn from. It's us men that have to pay for every damn thing. You know, and see, I did a video, you know what I'm saying, what, when it comes to racial equality. So to a certain extent, I understand what you're saying. Because due to racial, racial issues in this country and me being a minority, that puts me at a, at a, at a eye, you know what I'm saying? But as a woman, when you put your, put that extra hold on yourself that makes you really more unequal when you are a minority you know and it's sad that these things happen but it happens but just because one per something happened to one person doesn't mean the whole community all of a sudden gotta go into going to fright or shock because now the people who are who actually did that have won even more on their end because now they got a whole community fright to even do their jobs or to live you know so it's all about how you want to park especially in New York you got at rest areas where the where the services is way down the, down the road, you know, and, and you got all these park, all the parking spaces is off to the side. There's really no lighting there, and it's dark. I understand that. You know, say that's way. Then you got to think about, even though you don't see the wildlife, does not mean that the wildlife is not there. One of my main things that I always say is when you see the pre prey, the predator is not far away. So when you see all these deers lining up on the side of the highways and all the other good stuff, know that the predator is probably somewhere nearby watching them. Predators can be wolves, bears, or whatever else. You say, well, they knew that wildlife. Well, guess what? The prey is still there. What makes you think that the predator is not there? Predators are not called predators if they was easily spotted. You got snakes out here. All you got foxes. You know what I'm saying? Time cats. <laughs> Even though time cats, you know what I'm saying, they're small or whatever. But you got lynxes out here too. You got bigger cats. Like it or not. But I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. I just wanted to sh share that with you. You know what I'm saying? Because when I was seeing what I was seeing, it was really kind of like silly to put fear in a whole community of truckers like that because something happened at a little rinky dink ass truck stop you don't know what that person could have did now 
I'm not going to disrespect that woman. I'm sad that she's gone. But people are assholes sometimes. I'm not saying that she was an asshole. I'm just saying people in general are assholes sometimes. They do things to people and expect for it not to come back on them. That woman that came and cut into me that day, she does not know me. But yeah, she wanted to act like she was so big, bad, and tough enough to finish sweeping her truck first, pull off, and then tell me to move my truck. You have people who will literally stalk you over that. Not saying that I will do that. I'm not a stalker. But I'm just saying. You don't know what type of mood I might be. I might have hauled off and smacked the hell out of them. Or did worse. In front of everybody. Or like I said, hold a grudge and get on down the road and see her again. And like, yeah, that's that bitch. I'm, I'm going to fuck her up. You know what I'm saying? That really was uncalled for. But hey, guess what? It happens. So, the person could have got a few drinks in them, japped off at the mouth. Probably let somebody fill them up, got a few drinks in them, let them fill them up, got them back in the trunk. Then all of a sudden decided not to let them have it after you got them kissing on you and all the other stuff, hand down your pants and shit. It happens. And then you want to change your mind. You done, you done did all types of stuff to this motherfucker. Got them in the, get it out of in the mood. They didn't want to stop. They teaching teaching people to say no me. You know what I'm saying? To a woman, a no no does not always mean no. But if they say no, cut the shit out. But at the same time, you know, no me. You know what I'm saying? You could have been you started screaming and shut up. You know, and you know what I'm saying? People like this rough sex. You got shades of Fifty Shades of Grey movie just came out showing that type of stuff. You see it on these websites for these porn sites. People like all that rough stuff get smacked up and beat the hell out of and, and all the squeeze and scrolls and choke and all other types of stuff. They're into that weird type of shit and it could have just went too far. They, they have cases where people like to be strangled and so that while they're getting, getting, having sex. So in the midst of getting strangled, they went too far and they end up getting strangled to death. Or whatever. They found blood on this woman. Like it or not, you have vampirism in this country. People who drink blood, and you have people who are willing to 